Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this video I will teach you how to make a simple text editor using the interface we created during this course. First we need to update the version of PySide 2. The previous version 5.15.1 was showing some errors in the functions that we will use in this class, so update to version 5.15.2 as shown in the video. To advance this class I created a new page called Text Editor just as we did in previous classes. So that done, we need to set this page that we just created as the startup page of our application. Just go to Stack View and change it to the name of the page we just created. On the Open button we will create a component that will be responsible for opening a dialog box that we will use to choose text files. Import Qt Quick Dialogs in version 1.3, QML Imports, imported the wrong version. Write as red text. Import the component file dialog as shown in the video, in this project we will use the extension .txt in the text files. And when the button is clicked it will display the dialog as shown in the video. We can copy the code we created earlier and paste it into the save button just by renaming its ID and changing the parameters as shown in the video. See that when we run our application and click on the save button, the option to save the file appears, and when we click on the open option, the option to open the file appears. With our dialog boxes created, we will create a function called open file that will receive the address of the .txt file that will open and will be displayed in the user interface. We need to use the slot in this function because it will receive the address of the file that will be sent through the interface. Import the QURL class, this class is part of the Qt core. What this class does is convert the URL address of Qt to a real path on your computer. I will use the encoder as UTF-8, after that follow the steps in the video. We will create a new signal called read text that will be responsible for sending the text that was read inside the file we just opened and sending it to our user interface. After that we go to the text editor page and create a new component called Flickable. This component will be responsible for creating a scroll bar in our text editor. Create a text area as shown in the video. This text area we will use to write and display the text that was opened via the open button. Create a new component called scroll bar as shown in the video. We will also put the text color as white and the font is size 12. 
see that our text area has been created and our scroll bar is already working correctly. We will create two new string properties of which one will receive the text that is currently written in the text area and the other that will be responsible for writing in the text area. Place the set text property in the text field of the text area. In our main QML file we will create a new property of type alias that will load the properties that are inside the current page of the component stack view. Now that done we will create a new connection from which will receive the text of the file that was opened in the Python backend. Create the function using the same name as signal as we learned in previous classes. Use the actual page property, it will load the set text property within the text editor page. See that when running the application and opening a text file everything is happening correctly. We can edit this text and save it after it opens again to see if it is really working. The time has come to create the functions that will save our text to file. We will create two functions, one to read the current text and set it on a temporary variable and the second that will save this text to a txt file on our computer. Let's create the first function called getTextField. Add a slot as string type to this function. Now create another function called writeText that will save the text that is in the application in a text file on our computer. Use the letter W, it will save the Python open function that will write this file. Don't forget to use file close, this will close our file after being saved. Now we will add this same function to the component file dialog that will receive the address where the file should be saved. After that we will run our application and test if all functions are working correctly. See that an error occurred when trying to save the file. This is because I wrote an extra parameter in the right function. Let's fix it now just by erasing the word self. Now see that when we run our application this function will be working correctly. We can do some tests by creating new files and also opening it to see if both functions are working properly. And we finish here our penultimate video. In our last video, I will teach you how to compile our application into a Windows binary file of type.exe. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.